Welcome to In the News for October 6, 2023. I am Brett Bernie from AppsInLaw.com. This is Jeff Richard's son <laughs> from iPhone JD. A little funny way you did the end there. <laughs> I like it. Good morning, Jeff. We want to quickly Hi. say we want to quickly say thank you to our sponsor for today, SaneBox. You heard us talk about it, uh, and for good reasons. And we'll explain a little bit more later on. But you can always visit sanebox.com slash in the news. S a n e box.com slash in the news. Well, Jeff, uh, something that I just did this morning, I don't know that if you if you knew when you purchased your brand new iPhone 15 Pro Max that one of the side benefits was a hand warmer for your pocket. <laughs> I, I don't know if you saw some of these stories this past week that there was people complaining about the fact that this the, the new phones, the, pho the, the iPhone 15s were so hot. Um, and apparently Apple wanted to address that. Now, when I go to the official Apple information here about iOS 17.0.3, they don't talk about hand warmers, but they do talk about something else that you and I address maybe almost every other week now, important security updates that is worthwhile for you to upgrade to 17.0.3. Yeah, look, I didn't address the iPhone warming issue on iPhone JD. And the reason right. for it is because <laughs> I never could really get a clear story on it. I mean, let me start by saying that my new iPhone, I could put it right next to my face. I'm seeing Oh, it's you not, got it on your cheek right hot. there. It's nice and cool. <laughs> it feels really good. You I can have, snuggle with it. It's great. <laughs> I haven't experienced any issues with my own iPhone. I will say this, that every time that you upgrade to a major new operating system, moving up to iOS 16, moving up to iOS yeah, 17, yeah. on either my iPad or my iPhone, for the first yes. couple of days, because the system is re-indexing photograph, all yeah. your photos and stuff like that, That's it's right. Gonna, it, it's using the processor more for the first couple of days. Um, and so you are going to feel, I guess, a tiny bit more heat, but it's not like a huge deal. As I understand this current, you know, saga, um, there were two things that were happening over the last week or so. One is there were some minor things in the iOS system that Apple tweaked with the 17.03 this week. And then additionally, mm -hmm. there were a few apps like Instagram that were coded incorrectly. And because right. of the programming right. errors, I think right. Uber was one of them too. They were, once they started, they got in these loops where they just went, 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 and really caused the... Um, the, the power to increase. There was one video I saw on YouTube where, you know, he just turned on Instagram and like it was decreasing his battery power, like, you know, <laughs> substantially and it was you heating up. It. So there right. was stuff going on again. It looks like that they're all being fixed and it's not an issue. People were concerned that maybe it was something unique about titanium. And I think just the opposite. Titanium does a better job of distributing mm -hmm. heat than mm -hmm. the stainless steel. So, you Good. know, it was okay. a little bit of a, of a nothing burger in terms of the issues. Um, But as for 17.0.3, you're right. In addition to addressing whatever or minor issue that was here. There's actually some important security updates and also updates if your iPhone is managed by someone else. Like for example, me, here at my firm, yeah, we use um, yeah. mobile device management so that there's right, can be right. some centralized so that if my phone is lost, my firm could could do something to wipe my phone remotely and stuff. If you do some of that sort of stuff, there are some updates in 17.0.3. Uh, uh, so, I mean, of course you're going to want to update anyway to get all the, the latest and greatest uh, patches, but yeah. that's what's going on here. So yeah, anyway, I just upgraded today. Yeah, it went really quickly. And you know, just mm -hmm. real quick, I, I, I want to address that. I, I didn't really think about that, but I've heard it from a couple of people. You're right. After the first, after you upgrade to that major upgrade from 16 to 17, for example, and it's not just what you're talking about, like, re, you know, going through and all the photos and everything, but even like there's improvements to like the search function. And, you know, mm -hmm. the search function works because it indexes everything on your phone. It's and, incredibly you know, it doesn't, important, yeah. It doesn't sound like it's that big of a deal, but that is a huge processor pull. So I'm glad that you mentioned that, Jeff, because you're right. And I, 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 I've brought this up to a couple of people even this week and just saying that, yeah, like your battery might take a little bit of a hit, you know, on iOS 7. It's just the first week, right, that we've had it mm -hmm. or so. But it's like, yeah, there's a lot going on that the phone is re-indexing and rejiggering. I mean, even just new apps that it's, that it's downloading in the background, lots of things going on. So good. I'm glad, mm -hmm. I'm glad that you... Um, you mentioned that, and uh, I'm glad that that uh, your phone is staying cool as a cucumber. Indeed, indeed. <laughs> because I know you've been taking a lot of pictures <laughs> yeah. over these last few weeks. You are continuing to link to some great stories. This one I thought was just amazing from Sebastian DeWith. Uh, this is at Lux Camera. Maybe this is his own uh, blog here. But some of the pictures in here, Jeff. Uh, I mean, I like your pictures, but man, these were incredible oh, no. in this in this these article. Yeah, yeah, so his what he he is one of the developers of the incredible Halide app, which is okay, one of the okay, that's right. fantastic yes. 
high end turns your yeah, iPhone party. into a professional right. photographer. And so right, right. he is he knows what he's doing with photographs. The the photographs that he shares, he as you say, are beautiful. Amazing. I mean, they are I, I wish I had that eye to just you know, I know incredibly frame these pictures. There's one when you scroll down that like you can see the outline of a fence and then there's a, a cityscape in between. Oh, just beautiful pictures. Yeah, the, the there it is. Right there it is. That's so but, great. Um, but it's great. But what I also like about reading articles like this is people that truly understand photography, yeah, they yeah. can appreciate what works and to extent what doesn't work on the iPhone cameras so much more than I can. And so when they go through and say, you know, let me tell you about this and here's why this is working and here's why it's not, I just find it really right. fascinating. Um, right. Now, he's a little uh, not upset, but he notes that for some of the really cool features – that you have in the new iPhones, they only yeah. work with the built-in camera app that, you know, Apple's own app. And so people like him, <laughs> oh, okay. they can't take okay. advantage of all of the fancy new modes yet. And I'm sure that Apple will yeah. change that over time um, because they always do. But, you know, they, just right out of the gate, they don't have all that. So he, in his own app, he's not able to take advantage of it, but he does a great job of talking about different things. One of the things he notes about the uh, telephoto lens, the 5X uh -huh. and the iPhone Pro Max, what are all the different names 15. that I have? <laughs> right. 15, exactly. All the different things about <laughs> that is, one, the big one. <laughs> I always, I always focused on the telephoto lens as a way to just sort of see something that's really far away. The examples that you, you and I talked about of like, you right. know, reading something off, off of a ship that's in the middle of the Mississippi River right. that I'm looking at on my window at work here. Um, but what he, as a professional photographer, thinks about is these longer lenses are just a way to better frame a shot, not because it's too far away, yeah. but just because of the way the, the, the depth of field and stuff. And so he is talking about how a 5X camera is a very different tool. And in a photographer's hands, it creates yeah. different types of photographs. And he's just saying it's it requires a different way of thinking about things. And you can come up with these pictures that are truly beautiful and would not have been possible without having this fantastic lens. And so yeah. when I read about this, I find it inspiring for me. And I can sort of copy some of his tricks that for him are just secondhand nature and try to come up with some pictures that I personally think are pretty cool that I take. So Great art car. I really enjoyed reading yeah. it for this reason. Yeah, this is a great art. I'm so glad you linked to it because I don't know if I would have found it otherwise. But like you said, he's like, he's like, I can't stop until I have shown you an inordinate amount of comparisons between the main <laughs> camera and its new long 5X telephoto counterpart. It's yeah. not only just because it's fun to see how it zooms, but he goes, you, you can just see, you can, you can show you how differently you have to look at the world around you to your exactly. point that you just made. Exactly. That's a great, that's a great story there. Okay, so then I know... <laughs> We mostly talk on the Apple side, iPhone and iPad, but today you link to an interesting story I would love to hear a little bit more about. Uh, this is on Darian Fireball, who pretty much only talks about Apple products as well, but he covered the Google Pixel 8 launch event. So this is like Google's high-end phone, right? I just don't know as much about the Android family here, but he linked to a story on The Verge. And wow, you were just really kind of highlighting some of the things in here that I think John Gruber at Daring Fireball was kind of wondering about. And even just from your perspective about like, what, what does it mean to take a picture now if we can make so many modifications even after we take a picture now? Pretty amazing stuff. It's neat. I was, you know, I read quite a, this is the one I linked to, but I read quite a few of the reviews of the new okay. um, Pixel 8. And it's interesting to me because in the Android world, you've got Samsung, which makes, you know, most of the phones. And a lot of people just get the Samsung phone. But then a very small percentage of Android users get the Google phones. And because Google makes the Android operating system, it's almost, it's closer to like the Apple, right? You know, they, they are often yeah, the phones yeah. that are going to push the envelope a little bit more and take the most advantage of it because they are designing both the software and the hardware like Apple does. So so I'm always really intrigued to see what Google does with the Pixel, even though they don't sell very many of them, because it sort of gives you a sense of, you know, we we know what Apple is doing to push the smartphone forward. It's interesting to see what Google, who's, you know, got so many smart people working for it, uh, right, do. Right. And so um, so that's why I was interested to see the new features. Um, but the one, you know, speaking of photography, as we were, it. Google has always been incredible with software. I mean, obviously, their search feature is incredible. And they have decided to take AI sort of to the next level on the Pixel. Um, on the on the iPhone 15 Pro, one of the reasons it takes such great pictures is not just the nice lenses that it has, like the 5X lens, um, which which the, the, the Pixel 8 also has a 5X lens, um, but also because of the computational photography. You know, Apple takes numerous pictures and splices them right. together. And so that right. way they can get all of the highs and all of the lows. And yeah. I think of it as 
doing the best job of taking what is you're actually seeing in the real world and preserving it as well as it can with all the colors and all the details and everything else. Right. Google seems to be going a different direction. We're not taking, (laughs) I mean, instead of just focusing on taking the best picture of what you're actually seeing, what if we improve upon that (laughs) and take the best picture of sort of what you want to see, even though it's not necessarily there. So they have these features that are built into the camera app that you can have like the magic editor where we've all had a situation where you take a picture and you don't realize it at the time, but then afterwards you're like, you know, I sort of wish that John was a little closer to the rest of the group, or I wish that this rock wasn't there or whatever else. And so they have built in the features of moving people around and moving (laughs) objects around stuff that you've been able to do for years in photoshop um yeah if you know what you're doing just, but they're just doing yeah. it right there in the camera and they're making it super simple and the results actually look pretty good and then likewise they have this feature that if you take a group and we've all done this before you take a picture of five different people and in the first picture mary's closing right. her eyes and in the right. second picture the little kids <laughs> looking away from the camera and we've all uh-huh. gone through this and you can't get a single good picture google like just from out of the box says oh that's not a problem We'll just pick the best face from all these different pictures and we'll just create a picture where everyone looks perfect. And on the one hand, yeah, that's what I want. And I will sometimes edit a picture in Photoshop or some other program to get that end result. Right. But I still sort of feel like that's me doing it on the back end. Whereas here, people (laughs) saying, we'll just do it as you take a picture. And so you're doing it, it right on the phone. You know, it raises, I don't know if you call it ethical questions, philosophical questions. Right. It's like, <laughs> what's the purpose of a photograph? Is it, are you trying to preserve what you actually yeah. saw? Or yeah. are you just trying to create something that maybe isn't reality, but it's the way that you remember reality? I mean, you certainly remember all five people smiling and, you know, having their eyes open at the same time. Yeah, even if perhaps yeah. It didn't happen. I get your point. Um, it's, I don't know. It's something about it. I, 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 yeah. What I want to say is it bothers me, but then again, since I sometimes do the same editing myself, I don't know. What do, what do you think yeah, about it? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's just, well, I guess, it, it, I, I don't know that I've really thought about it enough, Jeff, because I, I do feel like it is kind of crossing this line, but it's a line that we're going to cross inevitably, right? I mean, yeah. it's, it's going to yeah. happen. <laughs> it's not like we can stop it, I guess. And so it's just about embracing. You know, I've always kind of been that purist, I guess. It's like, okay, exactly what you were describing earlier. If I take a picture, like that's what I saw. I want to capture that moment, whatever was going on. But here I'm watching on Google's website here that literally there's a a, a father and a son on a carousel. He's looking down. You tap his face and then you can choose a different expression for the father that he's looking up in the camera and smiling as opposed Mm -hmm. to looking down. That's just incredible. And and something irks me inside, and I think to to your point, that it's like, well, wait a minute, that's not really what was happening. That's not what I captured. Mm-hmm. On the other hand, it's exactly what you've Jeff, Jeff, I've done the same thing. I have modified pictures. I, you know, even on the back, like you said, maybe it's on the bit on the back end, not so much on the phone. But in a way, I will tell you, and, and I know you're gonna talk about some of the photos now. I just tried out that iOS 17 portrait uh, mode to where I took a portrait photo. In, in iOS 17, I can now select which object that I wanted to focus on as opposed mm-hmm. to the one that I focused on when I actually took the picture. Now, that's yeah. not to me as jarring as maybe some of this, but it, it just it's, it's pretty amazing what it can do. I mean, this is an age in which you can now go to chat GPT or whatever the uh, image <laughs> uh, generator that is uh, affiliated with yeah, Chat GPT Dolly and say, or mid, mid yeah, journey, yeah. I want a picture of my family, you know, on the beaches in Hawaii or whatever. They can create something similar to that, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I just feel like that it's like, it, 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 that's my attitude, I guess. It's inevitable, but uh, it's going to take a little bit, it's it's going to take a little bit of soothing to kind of get there. <laughs> you yeah. Know? And it's, it's really uh, nothing Slowly but new. surely. I mean, forever Photoshop has had the ability to whiten your teeth. Um, sure. I mean, there, there's even a feature in Red Photoshop eye, right now all that, kind that of I stuff. can take a picture of one of my kids, and if they weren't smiling enough, Photoshop can actually create a smile <laughs> pull, pull, just by moving up, up the corners the... of their mouth. And I tell you what, Brad, it looks really convincing. And you know, part of me is like, oh, finally, I got the picture of my kid smiling. But then you're like, but right. he never really did smile. That's just he me. does. <laughs> It's an interesting picture, <laughs> and you, like you say, with with the the chat GPT and the mid journey, the dolly, this this whole yeah, world yeah. of what is real of deep fakes, for example. You know, just mm-hmm. this week, I heard in the news that Tom Hanks was complaining that some dentist had a commercial where it looked like Tom Hanks was was endorsing the guy, and it was a deep fake. You know, mm-hmm. we're getting to the point where you can't yeah. trust what you see or what you hear, and uh, 
it's a brave new world. I tell you, it's interesting, interesting discussion. Well, I'm glad far, you linked far more yeah. than we can resolve today. So <laughs> I'm glad you linked to it just because it is something again, it's, it's not like anybody's going to stop it. <laughs> Google is obviously going all in on it. And to a certain extent, I think Apple is doing a lot of the same stuff. Like you said, they are taking all of these pictures in the back end. It's just maybe how much are they allowing, you know, from a front end user interface to do some of the, uh, the changing. And, uh, anyway, it'll just be interesting to, to continue to watch that. Mm -hmm. You linked to a review from Jason Snell, one that I always look forward to anytime new hardware comes out. This is the iPhone 15 Pro and Pro Max. Uh, really good uh, 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 points that he makes throughout the entire uh, thing here. I really, I really enjoyed his his take on the action button. That you know, at, at first uh, he wasn't, he didn't think he was going to miss it, but then you know he's come to like it. And you know, anyway, it's I think some of the same things you were describing earlier. That like you got to get used to it, right? And exactly what it, what is it eventually going to be? What is that? What 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 is that going to uh, create as an action and, and it just looks like other people are kind of wrestling with that too yeah it's i mean nothing we haven't talked about in the past but a great solid yeah. review that covers all the features um he did a great job it's worth looking at if you're if you either own the new iphone or you're still thinking about getting one great stuff since you have the new iphone 15 pro max i would be interested to know what USB-C cables that you are using now because <laughs> you've had to at least get rid of some lightning cables here. Mm -hmm. This is another good article in, in Macworld by Dan Morin um, that I know we've alluded to this before. USB-C cables. One is not always like the other. And boy, that just really frustrates me, Jeff. Yeah, it's it's, you know, for so long, people have been clamoring a certain pop person a portion of the population has right. been saying we, we don't want to have this proprietary lightning you know port we want to have the standard of USB C and so I sort of feel like okay now we have it and it's great in some ways but it also means that you have the chaos of the USB C world out there that yeah. not every cable does the same thing. I personally have only purchased well I guess I've purchased two cables. One is okay. I needed to get something from my car for CarPlay to work. And so I had to get a cable that had USB on one side. Right. And USB-C on the other side, because what I had been using for CarPlay was USB to Lightning, of course. And then right. also I purchased an additional cord for my home computer, which is a Mac, um, because I wanted to have, take advantage of a high-speed USB-C. And that's something that, you know, most USB-C cables, unless you specifically purchase it to be high-speed, it's not going to be because they're more expensive it's not that be, way. Right. And, right. Um, and I think I had previously linked to the one I got. It wasn't that expensive, maybe 25 bucks on Amazon. But it would allow the high-speed transfers. And again, I wanted it because some Sometimes when I take videos of my daughter's basketball game, it's lots and lots and lots of high K of a uh, 4K, you know, right. high def video that it just takes a long time to move it over. And so now yeah. that I have a faster yeah. connection, I can I can move the video quicker once basketball season starts in a few weeks. So um, so I'm excited about it. But otherwise, it is nice that you have, you know, a lot more compatibility with USB-C. But it is frustrating that you could plug something in. Like, for example, I'll give you a good example. And I didn't link to it today, but there was an, a video done by somebody at The Verge. You know how one one of the new features of the iPhone 15 is you can connect to an external USB drive and you can record right. directly to that drive using those very high end video formats that really only right. professional folks are going to use. And, um, the person created the video, or at least thought they did, and then afterwards realized that they had the wrong darn cord, and so it was saving everything in a low quality instead of a high quality. I'm like, come oh, okay. on. That's something yeah. that never used to happen in the world of Lightning because, you know, they were all the same. Right. Didn't have all the advantages of USB-C, but at least you didn't have the uncertainty. So, you know, it's just something that you need to be careful about is – not all USB-C is created the same. If just keep that in the back of your mind and hopefully you won't get into trouble too much. It's almost like if, if you see a cable hanging in, you know, the checkout line at 7-Eleven, that's probably not going to be <laughs> mm -hmm. nothing against 7-Eleven. I'm just saying the point that you made earlier is I'm, I'm realizing you've got to pay for the quality on this. Mm -hmm. uh, so even Dan Morin in the story, kind of similar to you, Jeff, he talked about he wanted to use his new iPhone 15 with his CarPlay and he had a head unit there, but he had to do the same thing. He was using... I think a USB A to Lightning a cable, and he had to get a USB C to light to uh, uh, to the USB A right to plug into mm -hmm, his car. Mm -hmm. But then he said it would it, it was from a respected brand. It worked intermittently. 
Like it doesn't sound yeah. like you've experienced that, but he's talking about the fact that the error was on the cable, or at least he thought he found that it was a cable because when he went and in, into an improved cable version here, he it seemed it, it seems like it solved the problem there, yeah. uh, which that would have just infuriated me because I don't know that sure. I would have I don't know that if I would have thought about the cable, like I would have been going, what's wrong with my phone? Do I need to upgrade? Do I need to upgrade the car? Exactly. I, I would not think about the cable because I just take it for granted that the cable should be the cable, and I feel mm -hmm. like this could cause some issues with some folks and uh i don't i don't know what the answer is necessarily but i'm sure it's not the last time that we're going to talk about it but something i do want to talk about now is your fantastic review post that you made this week on using standby with ios 17. in fact you got me as soon as i'm reading this i started propping up my phone <laughs> <laughs> with the charging cable plugged in and it was just fantastic because i don't have a stand like what you talk about in this uh, but but i gotta get one because it is not fun to use it with a with a cable anymore but this was your your post standby mode tips on using it and what stands work best with it i uh, previewed this post a week ago on this podcast yes, you when did. i was sort of thinking about these issues and then i took some time uh last weekend just to actually start to write it all down and i'll tell you what i spent a lot of time on this post but it's because it comes out of love. It's because this is a great new mode. You know, <laughs> I, really I, I really love standby mode. It's it's a whole new feature that I'm using all the time. Um, so, you know, when I'm in my office doing something else, like right now, for example, you and I are recording a podcast and I can see right in front of me, my iPhone is in standby mode. So I can see the time with very big numbers that I can easily glance and yeah. see. I can see my calendar, my upcoming entries. I see, for example, we were just talking about Jason Snell. I see that today is Jason Snell's birthday. So happy birthday, oh, Jason. Happy Birthday, and so, Jason. You know, just <laughs> glanceable information that just shows up on my phone. And if I want to change my widgets, I can flip through. Now I've just flipped it and now I can see the, the temperature. It's a lovely 78 degrees in New Orleans right now. So um, I really nice. love standby mode in my office because it lets my iPhone be useful to me even when I'm not using it. I love it for putting on my bed stand at home when I'm, you know, yeah. in, as a night, uh, as a, a clock, basically, if I wake up in the middle of the night, I can glance and see with those big numbers that are in red so that they're not going to wake me up. It's a, t it's a dimmed approach. Yeah. Everything about it, I totally love. But I agree with you, Brett, although you don't need a stand to get the best oh, yeah. advantage of standby no. mode. It's so much better with a stand. And so I have looked at all the stands that are out there. I've read all the reviews that I could find. And the two that I picked that I that I recommend in this article have really yep. worked great. You know, the, the anchor one that I have in my office and the 12 yeah. South one that I have at home, they are just fabulous. They are so good. They work really well. Um, and uh, I just can't be happier with it. So if you haven't yet dicked, and, and I will admit my, my first 30 minutes with standby mode, I was a little confused. I didn't understand okay. all the different sub modes and I didn't understand it. Um, yeah. So if you well, haven't you really do. gotten into you it explained yet, it all. I totally recommend <laughs> take a look. Part, that's part of the reason I put this post is I wanted to have it all in one place so that yeah. if somebody had a question, I could say, yes, I, those are all good questions. Here's all my answers are right here. <laughs> so just go here and you can see how to change things around and how to customize it. But um, it is just such a useful mode. And again, I, I can't emphasize enough. It's like I have a whole new Apple device. I never yeah, used to have something right. in my office that was a glanceable source of information, almost like an Echo Show would be. People have those in their kitchen. You know, you can look at it and see the time and and have timers for things you're baking. It's like a, it's a screen that can do things for me. Um, and I'll say one last thing too, which is that it. I love that in addition to the regular modes. If your iPhone is doing something else, like, for example, um, a perfect example is playing music, you can have mm -hmm. a, a music interface come down that's got the yeah. play pause button and the volume. But uh, yeah, you're showing it right there. It's it's beautiful. It's big. It's easy to see. It's like yeah. the perfect musical remote control while you're listening to music or a podcast or something else. And th those are sort of modes that app developers can create that's on top of the standard parts of standby. Um, it's just fabulous. We've been talking about this for several weeks now, and I think I am just a victim of habit, Jeff. And like, I don't think about propping my phone up. <laughs> if I sit at my desk, I just lay it down, right? Horizontally, like it lays on mm. the desk. And I just, I never think about what if I turn, turned it, you know, in a vertical fashion? Because if I want to see the time, I mean, now I've got the always on, right? I still am the 14 Pro. So mm -hmm. I can just glance over there and see the time. But typically, it's like I'm looking down on it. Yeah. And you completely convinced me when I told you when I was reading this, I started putting my phone up, but I don't have a stand yet. <laughs> I have my on that anchor, though, because it looks great. And I got to tell you, the, the reason that 
I was perturbed with it. I loved having it sitting in a, in a you know, uh, uh, propped up, but it was plugged in. Cause like you say, you do a good job in here. You have to have it plugged in. It's gotta be on its side. It's gotta be being charged. Uh, it has to be, uh, it has to be still, and it has to be in sleep mode. But I didn't realize, I don't think Jeff, how often I picked up my iPhone. <laughs> Mm -hmm. to either like use the calculator or I wanted to check an app or I got a notification that, you know, only comes on my phone, for example, and I want to check it there. And so every time I would pick my phone up and I'd have to unplug it or I'd have to little the cord on there. Mm -hmm. And it just became infuriated in the sense that I like, man, I really wish now I really know why I need to have a stand yeah. because I can just, you know, pluck it off. And I know these ain't these stands you're talking about, you know, it's it's a uh, MagSafe, right? So it MagSafe. just kind of yeah, clocks right MagSafe. on. Instead of having to plug, take a, a cord in and out, in and out, that makes a world of difference. It really yeah, does. Yeah, really absolutely. Does. Yeah, I got to spend some money. You're spending yeah. my money. But today. it's nice that even uh, before you spend that money, <laughs> like you say, Brett, you can just take your current phone, plug in a cord, and start True. to get a sense of it and say, you yeah. know, does this seem like a mode that I'm interested in before I spend the money on a stand? Oh, you will be. Um, because yeah. a stand is going to be, you know, anywhere from 50 bucks to the ones that I have because there are three in one stands. There are 150 right. bucks because right. they charge multiple devices, but you don't have to right. get those high-end ones you can get something cheaper that is only for the phone if you want so um yeah okay last question here because i saw this and i was playing around with it thank you to your uh directions how did you get this digital clock on this side yeah. i am guessing you mentioned widget so let me yeah so there. let me tell you yeah, what please. you're asking yeah of please the three modes in standby one of them is the widgets mode and in the widgets mode you have something on the left and something on the right, right. apple it's gives you separated. a clock right. to put on the left or the right um but <laughs> apple's but. clock is in an analog <laughs> clock which is beautiful if you want an analog clock it's pretty I wanted something that's a very easy to see numbers. Exactly. And Apple, Boom. For whatever reason, in the clock mode where it takes over the entire screen, yeah. Apple's got a fantastic digital clock. But in the widgets mode where it's half and half, they don't have a digital clock. Right. So what I did, right. as you said, is I used the third-party app Widget Smith, which is something okay. that I okay. purchased. You know, how many years ago did I purchase Widget yeah. Smith for widgets on my iPhone? And now uh, the the creator of uh, uh, David Smith, I think his name is. He yeah, yeah, is right. continuing exactly. to um to update it. And so now he's taken full advantage of widgets and standby mode. And you can create, I mean, just oh, I, I can't even count the number of different types of widgets you can create, whether it has, you know, the time or the weather or your to-do right. list or your clock item, you know, whatever you want. So of all of the the bajillions of different choices in Widget Smith, I went to the clock choices. And then I just created a clock with nice big numbers that I thought were easy okay, to read, okay. where it's yeah, got the, the hours on the top and the, and the minutes below it. And then once I created that widget uh, within the standby app, I was able to say, okay, now I want you to add a widget Smith widget. I had in the app, I had already created the, the type of widget. I wanted this particular clock. And now it's the thing that always stays on the left side of my screen. And I love that okay. clock. It's okay. beautiful. I, that, it's, that's it is great. so much better than anything. And that just that this is why the widget mode in standby is so powerful because it's limitless. I mean, all you need is a great developer to come up with a really good idea for a widget Absolutely. and then you can yeah. use it. And each app can have, have multiple different types of widgets. So there are truly infinite choices for the widgets mode of standby, which is great. One last question on this notifications. So when I mm -hmm. noticed when I had it on, you know, standing upright or propped up, the notifications would, would come on. Like I have a calendar appointment coming up, mm -hmm. but because it's locked, it just said calendar. Like, I don't think that it gave me the actual information. How are you handling notifications? Can you turn that off in standby mode or yes. do you just let them come? Okay. Okay. Yeah. So what you do is in the settings phone on your iPhone in notifications, okay. Um, okay. you can create what shows up in standby mode. And I chose, like you say, Brett, if you had, for example, a text message, you could either get no notification. You can get a notification that there's a text message, but it doesn't actually show the message. Okay. Or you can go to the third mode and it will actually show in a beautiful full screen, large type, easy to read, show the text message. And I opted for the third option so that if I'm sitting here in my office and I'm right. working on, you know, I'm, I'm drafting a motion for yeah. one of my legal cases and uh, my wife sends me a text message, you know, my watch will tap me because of a text message. You know, that's what right. it always does. But I can just glance down at this little screen okay. and it will actually, you know, it'll okay. show me that there's a text message. And about right. a second later, it will actually show the text message on the screen okay. or at least okay. the first line of it. And chances are I will have now seen that's enough that right. that's all I need. But if I want right, to see right. more, well, then I'll look at my watch or look at my phone or whatever. Okay. So, okay. But you have to turn that on. And of course, it makes sense because the idea is that many people will put their – 
uh, iPhone in standby mode and then maybe leave the room. And so you yeah. want to decide I don't, if somebody right, else walks right. in the room, do you want them right. to see? Um, and right. because the way I'm using standby mode, I'm only using it in my own office or my bedtime stand. I'm not worrying about it. But if you were putting it in your living room or in your kitchen where the whole family is there, you might choose for privacy reasons not to have the full notification shown. It's up to you. You just make that choice. Yeah. Good point. I just, I, I, again, I'm, I'm just so uh, uh, getting excited about all this. The photos mode, it's just great. I didn't know you could, you know, it was that swipe back and forth, you know, left mm -hmm. and right to get into the different and into, into the different uh, scenarios, like you're Neither saying. Right. But yeah. the photos was so cool. I loved. I just loved having that on. Like you, you call it here. It's like a digital picture frame, but it's exactly. got a beautiful clock on it and everything. Okay, okay. We'll uh, we'll geek out a little bit more probably on standby mode as we go. <laughs> Couple of links that you had about the Apple Watch. First of all. If you're still holding on to Apple Watch first generation, good for you, <laughs> except that it has now been labeled officially obsolete by Apple. <laughs> I guess that really just means that they're not going to provide any updates or anything for it, right? But I mean, it's been several years. I still have my first generation, but no one's wearing it anymore. Yeah. Old Apple products, they, they go to a stage. I think first Apple calls them vintage, which means that you can still get some support, but that they no <laughs> longer nice. receive regular software updates. Right. And then they go Not to the harsh. obsolete stage, which means you don't even, <laughs> you can't even order parts for them anymore. And of course right. it makes sense. I mean, there's no reason the, uh, the original Apple watch, which came out, what, 2015, it is, you know, it's so ancient by today's yeah. standards that there's no reason for someone to still be fixing it. And yet, you know, it's, I, I, I it's, Bitter, it seems weird to say bittersweet because it's not like I want to wear my old Apple right. Watch, but I guess I do now know that if I pull it out again and put it on, um, and if there's a problem with that, I could no longer get it fixed. Um, so be it. You the, know what I still have, though? Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. The oh, well, thing I that I still have is the original band. I still have the original band that I'm using with my Apple Watch Ultra first generation, which that still just blows me away that Isn't all that these awesome? years later, yeah. we we still have that compatibility. You go ahead. Band compatibility is, is good. The, the one funny thing I was going to say is that, you know, it, it was almost was a laughing stock from day one. But the idea that Apple introduced the original Apple Watch with this 18 karat gold model that could cost up to $17,000 for technology that you know is going to be outdated yeah. in a year, you know, yeah. would you ever spend $17,000? dollars on a gold iPhone, knowing that next year it's going to no longer somebody be somebody did. I'm sure. Thing. I guess. I guess there's someone that does it every year. But um, that just sorry. So so if you had an 18 karat gold Apple Watch, it is no longer going to be supported. Another quick Apple Watch story you linked to, which I thought was great. The best ways to track your kid and why you might mm -hmm. not want to. This was on the Wire Cutter, which is New York Times. But this is great. There was some, you know, I, to me, <laughs> the best is going to be an Apple Watch, and I think that's one of their their you know their their top options here. But they have mm -hmm. the Verizon Gizmo Watch as well. Anyway, yeah. I kind of like this idea. You know, I, I thought she did a good job. The author did a good job of talking about you know when they're younger. I mean, my we just dropped my daughter off in college, and so we still you know have the ability to track her to see if she's in class or you know at the dorm or somewhere else like that and that gives us a little bit of comfort you know just being far away from her that kind of a thing uh but i thought the author did a good job of understanding privacy aspects and things in here but this was a good article that you linked to so thanks for thanks for doing that it's funny because uh, i remember in the yeah. 70s and the 80s brett when i was a kid you know if, if my brother and i got on our bikes and just oh, yeah. rode around to the neighborhood my parents had no idea think, where we are they couldn't yeah, find us yeah. you know if, if there was an emergency you know that we might come back at the at the end of the day and yet right, in today's right. world and, and i'm just as guilty of it if my kids are anywhere i want to know exactly yeah. where they are at all exactly. times. i know it's just a, it's know. a different world so um <laughs> you know <laughs> uh, i think gps when i was a kid was here's a quarter <laughs> so it's like you, if, if you get in trouble, give us a call, right? Here's exactly, here's a quarter. Yeah. Put it in your shoe or something. Uh, yeah. One last thing on the Apple Watch. Uh, uh, when we had the Apple announcement, they talked about the Apple Watch Series Nine and the Apple Watch Ultra Two, which have really been a, the consensus has been it's not really worth the upgrade if you came from an eight or an Apple Watch One uh, Ultra mm -hmm. One, right? It's like not much different. Except one of the big things that Apple double down on was the double tap that they offered, which as soon as I saw it, I think me along with millions of other people said, well, wait a minute, that capability where you can just tap your thumb and forefinger tap tap while you're wearing the watch, that capability is already in the Apple Watch OS. It is part of the uh, assistance or uh, the, the 
uh, accessibility, accessibility uh, functions in there. And you linked to a story today in Apple Insider, which I thought did the best job I've seen so far of understanding the differences, why this is a little bit different, like what they have. You can only do this with an Apple Watch Series 9 or an Ultra 2. If you have those newest uh, watches, you can use this double tap, which they do a good job of, of differentiating between kick, quick actions and assistive touch. Yeah. Then they are very, they, they work differently. Um, when you have the accessibility feature turned on, it sort of takes over your whole Apple watch, whereas Apple's brand new double tap yeah, feature, right. which to be clear, it's actually still not available yet. If you have one of the newest Apple watches, you can download the beta version to enable it, but it, That's it right. probably, it's probably going to be another month before it comes out to everybody's Apple watches, but it's coming very soon. It's obviously one of the features that will be upcoming for the new Apple watch. But, um, you know, I get the sense that Apple tried out the feature. Somebody smart at Apple said, you know, Hey, wouldn't it be cool if you could, you know, use your hands to control certain things. Right. And I think it was smart that they made it an accessibility feature for people who needed it because you, you right. only have one right. hand, for example, right. but it still didn't work perfectly. And, I think it was not. It was only with this newest Apple Watch that has the better processor that they got consistent. And, and this article that you're showing uh, confirms that that with the new Series Watch Apple Watch, Apple Watch Series Seven uh, Nine, excuse me, with the newest yeah. Apple Watch and the new processor, it works so well almost 100 percent of the time that it's probably yeah. ready for the masses. Whereas the former accessibility feature, it was a little bit more hit and miss. And I guess it's better it than nothing if right. you needed it. But right. um, so, yeah, so that's why when when you and I, like you say, both heard about Double Tap, we were like, wait a minute, I thought that something like this existed. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, that's because we just saw an earlier form of it, um, but now it's ready for prime time. Or at least it will remember, be when it comes out of beta. Yeah. Yeah. I remember when we first heard about these accessibility functions, it had to be at least a year ago, maybe even more. Maybe I more turned it on, tried it, and exactly what you said. It's like, you know, this is not, this is not... This isn't as functional as what I need it, but you know, I didn't need it, right? I don't have uh, a situation where I need to have something like that, but I was thrilled that Apple put something like that in. And I, I, I feel like this is just kind of the evolution of it. Like it, it, we talked right. about this before to where they saw that something was functional, even from an accessibility standpoint, but then they've continued to improve it to where now it's sort of built in. But you have to have the new watches in order to, right. you know, I, I guess I'm just frustrated with that because it's like, wait a minute, I, my my Apple Watch Ultra isn't even a year old. <laughs> it's like, why can't I get that function in there? And it really, uh, you know, maybe they could, but I think to your point, Apple made the decision like we're not we're not going to provide this. It's just going to be for the newest watches, and probably because it it just does take advantage of that newest processor on there. Mm -hmm. Apple TV, the actual box, not TV Plus, but the Apple TV TV OS seventeen. That's something that was also released not too long ago. And if you wanted to take a couple of days to read <laughs> everything there is to know about tvOS 17, Mac Stories has you covered. Actually, I thought this was a fantastic article. I, I mostly skimmed a lot of it from Sigmund Judge here in Mac Stories, but boy, he goes through everything you can possibly do. And really, it just kind of opened my eyes on some of this stuff. Like, mm -hmm. uh, really? I, 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 I did not actually know that it was that, um, uh, you know, these features were so good. And also the the big takeaway for me was, wow, the Apple TV can really do so much from watching videos, from the mm -hmm. FaceTime, from fitness, from shortcuts, from, you know, Siri. I mean, just so much that it can do these days. A really great article here. For folks that are not going to take the time to read the entire article, um, although I, th I did think it was interesting, <laughs> um, let me just tease out one single feature just so that you know yeah, about it. Yeah, do it. With the newest operating system for your TV, if you lose your Apple TV remote, you know, that thin little remote, you don't know where it is, it's stuck between the yes. couch cushions. What you can do is you can load up on your iPhone, the remote app, which of oh, course allows yeah. you to control the it's Apple great. TV. But one right. of the features in the remote app is you can now locate your remote. And now how do you do that? Because the remote doesn't have like an air tag in it or anything like that. But right. just using Bluetooth, you can sort of get, you know, you're closer, you're further away. And, and this article describes how to do the feature. So if you ever find yourself that you've lost your remote and you think it might okay. be somewhere else in the house or behind the couch cushions, just remember that as long as you have your iPhone with the aid of your Apple TV running TV OS, uh, what's the number again that we're up through? 17, 17. Now? yeah. 17. Um, you could actually try to find your remote. I haven't tried it yet because I haven't lost my remote, but you just keep in mind that that option is there. And if six months from now you need to use it, just remember, ah, maybe I can find it. So uh, if you're looking for some popular baby names, might we just suggest that you stay away from 
S I R I. <laughs> this is an interesting story. Apparently, this lady in the United Kingdom, that is her name, uh, which she says, what was the, what's the actual thing that the that it means? S I R I, or at least that's what they said that it was that it was going to stand for. Um, speech interpretation and recognition interface. Yeah, that's actually S I R I. I that's know, not, but it, yeah, I don't know. Where, I, that's not true. That's not where it came up with. The, the, I, the, I know it's not. <laughs> yes, yeah, the Siri name came up from the Stanford uh, uh, Research Institute, uh, who's who, which developed the original Siri right. app way, way back when, which Apple purchased. But anyway, regardless, I have to admit, I if know you, um, if your name is Siri or if your name <laughs> is in some households Alexa, I do feel for you because you know people that may be talking to you and every time they say your name, it's triggering alerts all around you. And I do feel for this woman who decided she would take I, on a, I know. a nickname instead. And you know, I probably do the same thing too. She says that she works in a um uh, in like a, a, a gym or something like that. And so right? you can imagine people that are working out all the time and they're saying, you know, talking to their watch and getting information <laughs> or or talking to her and then everybody else watch everybody's everybody watching <laughs> iPhones being triggered. <laughs> it's it's confusing. Um, I, it's, apparently, you know. it was okay before iOS 17 because, right, it, because people just have the hey people part. just couldn't it's, say hey. Well, like when mm. they see her come in the door, they can't say hey, blank because that would turn it on. So they were trained to not say hey. <laughs> When they said hello to uh, Mrs. Price here, but now with <laughs> iOS 17, you don't have to say hey anymore. Yeah. And so she is literally going to change her name. She has to change her name <laughs> because everybody is saying her name. Anyway, kind of a funny story. And last but not least, if you are if you need your daily dose of happy tears, um, it's a video from Apple called Another Birthday. And if I'm not mistaken, Jeff, I think they showed this in the Apple announcement a few weeks they ago. Did. Is that right? Okay. They did. But um it is so well worth watching again. Don't 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 give it away, Brad. Don't give it away. I, mean, I know. There's anyone that hasn't I've seen just... it yet, <laughs> there, there's a little twist in it and I, and I'm and you're holding back. Let's just say I am. If you're I am. Ready to have it's some it's tears, so worth it. Go ahead and start. Absolutely. Off, yeah. <laughs> it it just it make it makes it makes you it makes you feel good. And then you just want to go hug somebody, which is also great as well. <laughs> We want to thank SaneBox for being our sponsor today. We, uh, you've heard us talk about it. If you haven't had a chance to try it, I think it is uh, you, you owe it to yourself to at least try it. Certainly because if you're drowning an email, or I should say you probably are drowning an email at some point, if it's not even for your work email, it's probably for one of your personal accounts, right? And what's great about SaneBox is that you can apply it to any of the accounts that you currently have. You can use it with a Google account, an Office 365 account, an iCloud account, or frankly, I, I even use it for what, what I call an IMAP account, right, Jeff? These are like old email accounts. Well, not old, but my email accounts because I have an email host. And the mm -hmm. fact is, is that I can set, I set up SaneBox on one of those accounts. I just had to put in my server information and when I, when I created my account at SaneBox and it's working out fantastic. So, SaneBox is basically, I mean, the way I describe it to people is it really is just like my little personal assistant for email <laughs> because it looks at all of my email. Um, it, it does sort of that, that initial culling of things that I don't need to see immediately. And it just helps me focus on the messages that come in my inbox that are going to be the most important. It's like from business standpoint, it's like, you know, friends, a family, acquaintances, you know, things that I need to take action on. Like the other day, I needed to like fill out something for a life insurance policy. And I needed to see that and get it back immediately. And because now SaneBox does that initial calling, I only have maybe a handful of messages in my inbox that I know are something that that requires my attention almost immediately because if it's newsletters that goes into another folder for me that I can look at later if it's other emails that like I you know I can look at later there's like the re the reply later or the same black hole some of these other folders that SaneBox sets up for us that I know I can go and look at any time that that I have some additional time or at the end of the day or something like that. Uh, I know we've been we've been talking about a lot of these different features and folders. Uh, and while you hear us talk about it, you can go to sanebox.com slash in the news. But uh, we talked, I think, a little bit last week about some of the different offerings on the subscription levels. Jeff, you did a good job of explaining about how to approach this as well. Yeah, just so you can decide how many accounts you want to cover, how many of the features that you want to cover. Um, but I mean, I will tell you, you know, I, I like the version that has the two email accounts because it means that every time yeah. I go to my iPhone JD email, 
I can go in and out quickly because I'm not wasting my time right, on right. the stuff that eventually I want to look at, like my newsletters. But when I just jump in the inbox, I see that I have three messages. I deal with them. I'm done. I'm not. It's not Boom. trying to, to to pull out those three among the dozens of messages around them that sort of right. mess everything up. I also have it on my Gmail account. It means when I need to get when I go to my Gmail, I get in, I get out, and I'm done. And then later, whenever I decide to take the time, then I go through the other stuff. So if that's if your time is valuable to you and you want to be more efficient, especially yeah. with maybe some, like you said, some of your ancillary email accounts, um, this is just a great way to be more efficient. I I, I think I've kind of uh, tangentially ca calculated, Jeff, that it's got to save me a couple of hours a week. I mean, truly, just from all the times that I would check email and kind of go through and manually mm -hmm. like, you know, click, 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 go to the next one, you know, delete, delete, click, click. I mean, it just has saved me several hours a week now. And so what we're referencing here, if you go to sanebox.com slash in the news, you can get to the pricing page and they have very clever subscriptions as one's called snack. Uh, that's for one email account and you can pick two of the features. The lunch subscription level is what Jeff is talking about here. You can that's get two for, email yeah. accounts, right? And you get six features on each of those mailboxes. And some of the features, if you click the little uh, help uh, uh, little uh, icon here, that's the same later uh, folder, the slain, sane black hole folder, <laughs> the sane news folder, which is probably my favorite. There's some other power tools. There's some snooze folders on here as well. Uh, just really worth going and looking at. If you wanted to bump up even more, they got the dinner <laughs> subscription level. That's four email accounts. You get all the features. Uh, but if you're still not even sure, even the snack is a little bit too much for you to stomach today. <laughs> They do have an appetizer plan for only seven cents a day. Um, I think you only have one, yeah, one email account and one feature. But hey, if the newsletter, uh, sane news folder is something that appeals to you the way that it appeals to me, that's a great place to start. You can always upgrade later if you need to. You can always uh, change it. Uh, you can stop it at any time <laughs> if, if you dare. Uh, I think you're going to find that immediately within a few days that it's going to be something important to you. And that's why you can go to sanebox.com slash in the news. We can sign up for a free trial. You can uh, get 14 days completely free. But if you decide to stay, because I think that you will, if you go to sanebox.com slash in the news, you can get $25 credit toward any of those Sanebox subscriptions. So you can just apply it to any of those subscriptions there. So thank you, Sanebox, for uh, partnering with us and being a sponsor for the In the News podcast. Sanebox.com slash in the news. In the know. Time for in, in the, the know. know. I know, my friend, that you are a crossword junkie well maybe a new york times crossword junkie if i was to be specific we've talked about this before you like crosswords i have to confess i have never liked crosswords <laughs> they have always <laughs> frustrated me i have always just said i don't have time for this it's not something that i'm interested in but one little sneaky thing that came in ios 17 is the apple news plus subscription and the apple news plus app now offers the new york times crosswords and not just not, the not, crosswords it's not the new york times it's, crosswords it's their own crosswords oh it's their oh it's their own crossword oh i yes, thought they yes. were pulling from the new york times on here no see that's the thing is oh well Apple this even done, okay okay yeah, this even this is, uh, uh, makes it more mysterious now <laughs> yeah, so this is like i like this feature and what it means it makes sense that any good news you're going to want to have crosswords and so you know, a newspaper always has a crossword. And so Apple has decided we have Apple News. It's this digital age. We don't have the physical newspapers, oh, okay. but we should have some puzzles, including crosswords. So what they've done is they've they've uh, teamed up with one. I think it's called the Puzzle Society or it's an organization that's been around for a long time. And they said, why don't you make some great crosswords for us? And um, and they okay. are. They are really good crosswords. And if you're already paying for News Plus or you get it free as part of your Apple One subscription, yeah, yeah. you can play these crosswords and they have a big crossword every day. They have a mini crossword every day. So. Oh, it's just it fun to get the there. Society. So yeah. I appreciate that you've that you've enjoyed it, Brett. But you didn't even realize what you were not playing the New York Times crossword puzzles. And I'll I tell didn't you, for for crossword <laughs> people that are a little this bit is... deeper into it. There is a distinction. There is a difference. And yes. one of the, it, and one of them is purposeful. And I linked to this today. That um, what is his name? Uh, Ross Trudeau is the editor for the puzzles on News Plus, and he okay. said that okay. there. Apple's goal was to make their crosswords more approachable. So for people like you, Brett, that haven't been doing well, crosswords yeah. as much, they're a little yeah. bit, it's, it's not even, I hate to say that they're easier because that's not, no, no, I, mean, I think you're good. Say it. He says, yeah, 
he actually says it's more welcoming to newcomers. That's yeah. me. I'm the newbie. I'm the newbie on crosswords, and it's yeah. a, and it's appealing to me. But what what he means is there's they're going to be sometimes a little bit less obtuse. Sometimes you know <laughs> yes. there are New York Times. It's, you know the New York Times crossword puzzle is is easy on Monday and it gets harder on Saturday, and then okay. Sunday is just the big puzzle. And so especially as you get later into the week, um, they will have all of these clever. Sometimes they're puns. Sometimes they're double meanings. You know, for example, just take the word book. Yeah. For example, it might have a clue that uses the word book, and you might be thinking, oh, it's a physical book, and then you realize, oh no, 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 they're talking about book as like the verb like when you book a vacation and it's only when you think uh, of that yeah, secondary yeah. meaning then you can understand the clue or sometimes they'll have clues that have a question mark at the end in the new york times which means that they're really sort of a it's almost a jokey answer it's a play on words right, right. the apple crossword puzzle tr tends to stay away from that you know they're much more straightforward it's much it's much closer to the monday new york times puzzle where everything is straightforward except that what apple will do is they will have those straightforward clues but even yep. have medium and hard ones so you can have yeah, that's right. hard clues but they are hard straightforward clues um versus whereas the new york times gets to be more clever now which one is better just totally up to you if you're a yeah. newbie like you brett you know then you this might, is better this is a great way to do it um <laughs> I actually prefer those obtuse clues because even right. though they're hard, I sort of like have this sense of accomplishment when I'm like, yeah, That's more satisfaction. What doing. And you yeah. know, yeah. the way that I do the crossword puzzles in the New York Times is my wife and I do. In fact, my daughter does as well. Uh, but we'll share them. And like sometimes I won't figure it out. And then later at dinner, <laughs> my wife will be like, "Hey, you know what? I saw that you didn't answer seventeen across. It's because they were thinking of, it was this." And I'm like. Oh, I didn't even think, you know, like they, they got me sort of oh, thing. Oh, really? So okay. It's, just, okay. it's a different strategy. But it's fun that you now have another source of crosswords that are included in your subscription. Um, I, I do think that I, Apple needs I gotta to- I got to tell you, it's great. Yeah. yeah. They. I wish they improved the interface a little bit. On my iPad Pro, if it's in landscape mode, the it- the, the way that the puzzle is in the middle, you can't. Yeah, see the puzzle it is a little. You need to yeah. turn it. So I, I hope that they that they tweak the interface in the future, and hopefully they will. But I love what they're doing, and I love having another source of crossword puzzles. But just keep in mind, <laughs> it's a different type it's of not, puzzle. I, yeah, so. I think the story that you linked to today said it's an NY Times style crossword puzzle. Yes, okay, so a, that's to be fair. Style. <laughs> and what they mean by that is the way that it's the layout, the number of bricks, the fact that yeah. it's a symmetrical, um, you know, crossword. But the clue, okay. the nature of the clues is different. So, but but here's even here's even a, a, a lower common denominator that got me into it. Uh, does the New York Times have the crossword, and then they have crossword mini? Do they have yeah, like a smaller crossword? Yeah, okay, those are fun. That's what grabbed me because it's like okay, those in a minute. I could yeah. do a six by six block, <laughs> and that's what hooked me, Jeff. I'm like, wait a minute, this is kind of fun. Like I got it, and I love how you can tap it to go down and go across. You know, obviously, everyone know, can knows by now that. I have not done crosswords all of my life, but I will tell you, I look forward to this every day now for this past week, Jeff, I've been doing it every day and it's a barrel of fun. I really am enjoying it. So I feel like I will evolve. Like I'm already getting a little, you know, smarter. I feel like <laughs> to the sense like, okay, maybe I could graduate into the actual New York times. You know I mean? That is the be all, you know, standard I know, but if you have the Apple news app and if you subscribe, to Apple News Plus, I get that as part of my Apple One subscription. You have to have a subscription for this. Mm -hmm. Then I would say go and try it. If you're like me, <laughs> if you're a newbie to crosswords, this is a good way. If you uh, have been doing crosswords, stick with the New York Times, right? Go go with Jeff yeah. on that. That's my in the know for the day. <laughs> well, let me just tell you, Brett, I am delighted that you picked that as your in the know today because as someone who loves crossword puzzles, it makes me happy to see people like you. I, I'm, get into I'm coming in the puzzles. fold. So, I'm coming you, in the you, fold. It's you great. Brought a smile to my face when you think that you're picked. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so my pick for today is the people and pets features in the Photos app on the iPhone, oh, on the yes. iPad, on your Mac. And of course, for many, many, many years now, we've had the people photos feature. Yep. What's one of the new things this year is it now, it it now uh, includes pets as well. So um, just as a reminder, many people don't take advantage of this feature, and I hope that you really should. It allows you to go through, Apple will find pictures that are seem to be the same person. And it will allow you to assign a name to that picture, you know, your spouse's name, your kid's name, your friend's name. And once you do that, it actually makes it so much easier in the future if you're trying to find pictures, like, you know, you're talking to your friend and you're like, hey, remember when we did such and such way back when? 
if you've already tagged yeah. your friend, yeah. you can use right. this feature to say, okay, now show me all the pictures of me and John. Oh, now I see that, you know, this is the restaurant that we went to four years ago and you can find that picture. So I find it very useful to have these tags done. Um, but you need to go through the a tiny bit of work of just assigning names to it. What's new this year is I think they're doing an even better job of identifying people. Yeah. Um, now keep in mind that when you first update to iOS 17, you need to wait a couple of days for it to rescan all of your photos. Yeah. And in fact, and it gets you'll up, know your phone when, will get hot. <laughs> your phone will get a little hot. You'll know when it's finished because you'll actually see the name of the folder change from people as it was before to people and pets. And then okay. we'll go through, you know, I noticed for me, for example, I have lots of pictures of animals in my folder, but the only two that it actually tagged for me is my current dog and my prior dog that I had before. And oh, maybe okay. that's a function of the fact that I had so many more pictures of my primary pet than, you know, neighbors, dogs and stuff like that. Um, right. Or it might be that I've noticed that for the pet pictures, the pet's got to be really looking at the camera. If the pet has its head turned, oh, okay. Apple's right okay. now not really picking it up. Whereas if a person has their head turned, it actually does a pretty good job of tagging the person. Um, okay. So the one, but one thing that's also new this year is the 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 app is tagging a lot more people. So even if you're someone like me and I've got like you know 25 people tagged, if I go to the photos app and I click or tap on the tab called peoples and pets, uh, which is one of your album, it's it's underneath albums. If you okay. scroll down below all the people that you've assigned names to, you'll see a bunch of faces that you haven't yet assigned names to in case you want to assign a name to them. And then if you want to see even more people at the very bottom, there's a button that's called add people and th th the phone will show you the rest of them. And that would include, for example, the add people might be the ones that it doesn't have that many photos of, or it might be somebody that you previously tagged and then you decide to remove them from your collection. A big example that people often have is if you have someone in your family and then like there's a divorce and they're not really part of your family anymore, you might not want to see right. that person's picture anymore. And so you can put it out there so that you don't see them. So that's that feature. So there's a lot more people identified. I wanted to alert people to that. And then another thing is, so let's mm -hmm. say that I've I've tagged my pictures. So so you, Brett, I mean, I might have 20 pictures of you, Brett, because you and I have known each other for many, many years and I've had <laughs> different pictures of you from different right. times in our lives. But there might be that one picture Maybe because it's a good recent picture, or it's just like a picture that you know looks the best. You need to choose what is going to be your um, the, the 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 key photo is what Apple calls it, and it's going to be the picture right. that shows up in the circle. Um, so it's going to presumably be a, a picture that you really associate with that person. The way right, that right. you assign that has changed a little bit in the new operating system. It used oh. to be that you uh, that you used the share uh, the share sheet to do it. There's now two ways that you do it. One way you do it is if you're looking at like all the pictures that I have of, of Brett Bernie, if I um, long press on one of the pictures, a little right. menu will pop up. And one of the options in that menu is make key photo. And then that oh. is the picture of you that will be my default picture of you. A second way to do it is when you're looking at a particular photo. So when the picture is full screen, if I either tap the info button, which is that I at the bottom of the screen, or if I just swipe up a little bit and it brings up all the info, like the date right. the picture was taken, the location, all that sort of stuff. Um, once you get to that, uh, you'll actually see at the bottom left of the photo, a little circle with all of the people that are identified in that photo. And if I want this photo to be my new key photo of you, I can just press on your face and then it has an option again to make it a key photo. So once oh, you have I a key that. photo, you know, at the end, you can have it that whenever you open your photos, not only you see all the people, but you see like a really good, clear picture of yeah, that person. Yeah, I like and, that. And also, you know, Very you nice. may, if you have somebody that you've known for years and years, you don't necessarily want to picture them from 15 years ago. You want something right. that they look like today. Or alternatively, right, right. maybe you actually do want the picture from 15 years ago because that's such a great picture of the person. But you can decide. Don't don't let your iPhone decide that for you. You go ahead and I encourage you to use the key photo picture so that you decide what's the photo you want to associate. So when you take right. a little time to play around with it, assign your names, pick your key photos, decide who's in there. Uh, it's just so much more powerful and it makes it so much wow, easier. Wow, this to is fun. In the future. Yeah, it is fun. Like sometimes. This. When I have, if I've just got some downtime for 15 minutes somewhere, I will sometimes go through and just tag additional pictures and stuff. Let me say one right. last thing before we get off of this. The way that tagging works is let's say, for example, that I might have 25 pictures of you, Brett. I will actually tag five of them and say, this is Brett Bernie. But then my iPhone using its on-device artificial intelligence will mm -hmm. figure out that the other 20 are also you because it knows what the shape of your face is and everything else, right? Right, um, right. So if I do that on my iPhone, on my iPad, 
or on my Mac on a different computer, it doesn't sync all of those over. It won't sync all 25. It will only sync the five that I identify, and then it will do its own analysis of the pictures to oh, find the other okay. ones. And so what okay. it means is on my iPhone, I could have a situation in which my iPhone says, I think these 25 are Brett pictures, five I know for sure because you've actually tagged right. them. Whereas on right. my iPad, it may actually say that there's 22 pictures or 28 pictures. So it can vary from device to device. Um, I sort of wish Apple did it a different way, but they've just decided that they they want to do all the processing power on device. Right, right. It's sort of a privacy feature and stuff, so that it's not all synced to the cloud and stuff. So, um, so that you know that might be why you might see a picture of somebody on one of your devices, but not on another device. Um, okay, just because of the way it works. Yeah, that's fantastic. I'm like I'm going through all my photos while you're talking because <laughs> I just didn't realize. I mean, first of all, I need to update a lot of stuff on here, but I didn't realize you could. You could have that much power. And I love being able to change that key photo in there. That's really great. That's nice. Yeah. And now uh, it'll recognize my dog even even there better on that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Great stuff. Thanks for talking again. I know there's so much. We keep talking. Every week it seems like we just have more to talk about. But we do want to say thank you to SaneBox for being our sponsor this week. You can go to SaneBox.com slash in the news to find out a little bit more. Thanks as always, Jeff. And we'll talk with you next week. Thanks, Brett. Bye-bye, everybody.